Now we'll move on to agenda item five. Uh, this is on pages 39 to 72 of the agenda pack. And this is in the application for the grant of premises license for Rum and Co, 12 High Street, Pontedewi. Uh, Mr. Chapel, would you please introduce the report? Thank you very much, Chair. This is uh, agenda item five. We're on page 39. It's uh, an application for a premises license for Rum and Co, uh, 12 High Street in Pontedawe, the applicant being a Gourmet uh, Catering Solutions Limited. Um, if I could refer members to the report at a paragraph 12, please. Members will note that the license application is set out detailing the license, uh, licensable activities and uh, the hours requested in the application. There were representations in respect of this application from the environmental health officers, the legal regulatory services being the licensing team, South Wales Police, uh, and they are reproduced at Appendix 1, 2 and 3 respectively. And in addition, there were five representations um, from other persons um, and they are set out at paragraphs 43 uh, to 47 of the report and their representations are reproduced at appendix 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 respectively. Um, just to note members that this premises has previously held a premises license. However, this license lapsed um, after information came to light that the previous a uh, license holder had become insolvent under the Licensing Act 2003, where uh, an app where a license holder becomes insolvent, the license lapses. And if it's not reinstated within 28 days, then nothing can be done um, with that license. This is what's happened in this case. Um, and now the applicant has had to come with a fresh application um, for a new premises license. Um, the recommendation today, members, is that you determine this application after considering all relevant representations. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Neil. Uh, we'll now go on to questions to the Legal Regulatory Services Manager. Uh, can we have the applicant, please? Sorry, can I ask a question on behalf of the applicant? Can just to clarify, Neil, um, obviously the applicant, the license that um, was in place at the premises um, was lapsed and that was through no fault of Mr. Dyer. Can you confirm that? Yeah, that, that's correct. It was um, a previous license holder that went insolvent and um, Mr. Dyer, unfortunately, uh, once the license was transferred to um, his company, yeah, to his company. Um, he hadn't realised that that was the case, and the the licence had already lapsed. There was nothing to transfer. So yeah, no fault of his own. Um, just an unfortunate uh, situation. Uh, we'll now move on then to the responsible authorities. Uh, could I have the police, please? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. In respect to this application. Uh, that, that applies for licensable activities as. Sorry, Neil. Oh, sorry. Um, that applies for licensable activities as outlined in both the application and my report. Um, it's submitted by Mr. Dyer on behalf of Gourmet Catering Solutions and has come about, as Mr. Chappell has explained, due to a previous license holder becoming insolvent. Draw your attention to the guidance issued by the Secretary of State under Section 182 uh, and Paragraph 1.4, which states the promotion of the statutory objectives are of paramount consideration at all times. Section 1.15 recommends that the license applicants contact responsible authorities when preparing. Uh, hang on, sorry. Um, oh, right. Uh, what is this? Questions for Neil? I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. No, none. No, none. So, <laughs> sorry. That's what I was like. Uh, do environmental health have any questions for Neil? Uh, thank you. Um, uh, uh, Mrs. Bromfield, do you have any questions for Neil? No. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Councillor Patterson? Not at this point. Oh. Andrew? Yep. Yeah. 
No, uh, sir, no. Oh, forgive no. me. I, I've jumped the gun. I do apologise. Uh, no I, questions I from me. Yeah, well, uh, you can leave then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we'll move on to applicant submissions now. Hiya, sorry for all of you that were here earlier, but it's me again. Um, I'm representing uh, Danny as a friend um, for, a, for a long time and obviously um, as you're all aware now, my uh, background in licensing has given him some advice. So I'm going to read out um, a statement um, that Danny has prepared himself. Um, so he stands before you today to ask for empathy and understanding with regards to the terrible position he's found in, himself in through no fault of his own. Um, today he is brought with him. Um, myself was got 17 years of licensing experience and I'm here just to speak on his behalf. Um, Mark... Um, Mark hasn't attended, sorry, but he is an investor in Rem and Co. And um, next to, to Danny here is Tony and Mark. And they both live um, the nearest um, to Rem and Co. And they will give their honest opinions of his abilities as a license holder. So um, firstly, he would like to thank Sarah, Neil and Peter for the hard work and understanding throughout the, um, um, the administrative oversight. They've been very supportive and helpful all the way through. Um, the last two months have been mentally challenging and equally exhausting. At the start of May, he received a call from licensing to tell um, that the premises license that was transferred by the very same department was invalid and there was no longer legally possible to serve alcohol. To say that his heart hit my, hit my stomach would be an understatement. In April this year, we started trading and we started really, really well. We were booked out every weekend for food and drinks. And we were the talk of the town. I had visions of bringing something to Pontadawa that was craving for, and I delivered it with a punch. I was aware that um, I was aware weeks ago that I'd be standing before you today to give my side of the story, and that I had to demonstrate to you the struggle and the long-term detrimental effects that this license issue has had. The truth is, my business is now on the brink of failure. When I started this new venture roughly six months ago, I had minimal debt, but very well controlled debt. I had money in the bank and a bright future ahead of me for me and my daughter. I now find myself crippled with uncontrolled debt and barely affording basic commodities. I have found myself missing all payday deadlines to all creditors and utilities, not only for the business, but at home. For the first 10 years of my daughter's life, I worked high at least to provide a comfortable home for her, but with very little success. I had a credit rating way below the national average and there was always more going out than was coming in. There were many times where uh, the next meal was questionable. Two years ago, I sadly lost my mother, grandmother and grandfather within six months of each other. And due to this, I inherited a sum of money that would change our lives for the better. I decided to use this money to pay off all my debt, book our first sunny holiday and take a gamble and start a business of my own. Due to my love of food and my natural ability to cook it very well, I opened a cafe called Scrum Brunch Cafe. It was a new and different idea which Pontadawa needed. Due to its overnight success, I decided to improve and increase the business model and created a smart, trendy and modern restaurant um, come Cocktail Bar in the very heart of Pontadawa, a live music-driven town full of amazing pubs. In order to do this, I secured a £20,000 funding from the Development Bank of Wales, £10,000 from Mark and a £5,000 from another old friend. This pressure alone has been horrific, to say the least. It has been out of my control. They invested in me and I want to give them the return they deserve. The business was estimated to turn over approximately £390,000 this first year of trading. We see the second year bringing closer to 450000 with the launch of a few amazing add-ons. Sadly, due to the disruption, we can now see the increase in, in year three, possibly even year four, of 66000 of the 39,000 would be taken between the hours of 11.30 p.m. and 2.30 a.m. every Saturday. These are the hours I've lost due to the demands made by environmental health. Over 10 years lease agreement, this loss equates to £660,000. This is purely based on those three hours every Saturday night. My overall loss since the 8th of May has been approximately £41,000. As you would surely agree, I was on the road to success, but I have taken a massive and unpredicted financial hit. My unique selling point for Rum & Co. was this stunning interior design um, that I'd like to refer to the photos I provided in 5A of the bundle pack. 
This is like no other in the area, serving amazing Tex-Mex food and unique drinks and cocktails for the clientele who expect a better quality product than what Pontedawa already has to offer. Clientele that would usually travel as far from Swansea and the Uplands to get the same. The most common review about Rum & Co is that it feels out of place and that it would be better suited for high-end streets of London, a far cry from the establishment people are so worried about it becoming. Creating this meant the clientele would be different. They would dress up smart and spend the evening eating amazing uh, food and staying late into the evening, sipping beautiful cocktails and having a great time. The very fact that the pollution and the residents or anywhere else can speculate that Rum & Co would be anything like the pub known as Kitty is, is pr- preposterous. I reiterated the words speculate. The representations made against my licence application that I received are all based on historic issues and complaints against other business owners in Pontedawa. In no way is it fair to assume or speculate that Rum & Co will follow suit. There is no proof that we would create any such disturbance. Within our first month of trading, our turnover was just short of £33,000, which is rather astonishing. In May, we were on target to turn over £35,000 due to several large parties booked throughout May. Sadly, they cancelled after discovering the ludicrous early closing time that we had to commit to. Subsequently, in May, we turned over just £13,000 and in June, we are set to be short of £8,000. In May, I had no choice but to use my remaining inheritance to cover the lease and pay off the nine local staff members that I employ. I'd sooner see myself go without than see my staff struggle. However, I do not have a man- enough money in both business or my personal account to cover this month's wages or bill. I'm a month behind on rent and I have many suppliers and utility companies chasing me for p- payment daily. None of this is my fault. For my business to survive, I must have the same licence or something very close to the licence I was transferred to by Neath Talbot Council, albeit wrongfully. I've made numerous requests for private bookings throughout the rest of the year, uh, this year, earning Rum & Co thousands of pounds over each event. However, I cannot commit to any of them without having a later licence for them to stay until the time they have requested one of these surprise 80th birthday. After learning what position I was in, two separate residents who have the closest premises um, to Rum & Co offered to come here today to tell the committee how I have controlled my activities when I held the later licence. So, um, Mark and Tony, um, I'll ask you both the same questions and I want you to answer each um, other with a short of an answer. Um, So, is your premises the closest to Rum & Co on High Street? Have I ever t- have I ever, ever taken every measure possible to ensure that my noise pollution is well controlled? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Do my door stuff and I regularly come out to your door to ask if the sound levels are too high? Yeah. Yeah. In your opinion, based on my previous opening times, do you think my staff, door staff and I have the cap- capabilities to maintain a comfortable level of noise? Yeah, yes. never a problem. In your opinion, which premises on High Street contributes the most instances of loud noises, fights, drunkens, and antisocial behaviour? The castle. Yeah, for me, the same. The castle. Um, has Rum and Co anywhere come anywhere close to causing the same issues? In your opinion? No. No. Um, and the last question: If he was to be, if I was to be awarded the late night license of two thirty a.m., would you have any reasons to object to that, being that you are the closest residence to my premises? No, not at all. No. Thank you. I'm passionate about food and drink. I'm a good person with good values. I hope you can see in me what many others um, have and give my daughter and I the opportunity to a good life. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, just as um, just representing um, Mr. Dyer, um, I've had previous discussions with um, one of the residents, um, Mrs. Roberts, um, and sorry, um, the residents sitting behind. Um, the, their main concern would be um, obviously the external area. So we, Danny and I have just discussed quickly, um, and I've written it down somewhere, sorry, but he would offer the external area to be closed by 10 p.m. Um, daily. Um, obviously, up until 10 p.m., he would like the facility to be able to play recorded music in that area, background music. Um, um Oh, so, sorry, background, background music. Okay. Uh, s- sorry. sorry. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay, sorry. We'll, we'll sorry, um, yeah. resident has made an objection. She is, she is a, Miss, Mrs. Roberts has made an objection. And sorry. 
attendance or was that just at that no in, in that case mrs roberts would you like to come down and sit next to um mrs bromfield sorry thank you okay. no, that's fine sorry so just i just want to point out that mr dyer is is happy to close the external area at 2200 hours obviously we will have discussions with residents if that's needed in relation to the music afterwards um obviously then just just putting that forward just early if we can come to some agreement with that um thank you oh, thank you very much We'll uh, move on to questions to applicants now. Uh, Neil, do you have any questions? Um, yeah, just just a, a very quick one at, at this stage. Um, you mentioned there about the external area. I know that was a, a particular concern um, for the resident and for uh, the environmental health officers. So closing that area at 10 o'clock, um, what would you propose then um, people would do for, for small? So you close it for consumption of alcohol? Okay. Yeah. What about people who would then? Go off at ten o'clock. Sorry. Um, and that's sort of throw me now. Um, it was I. Um, at the moment, the, the the smoking is up the front, which I feel adds to, to people congregating out the front. There's a much larger number of residents out the front, so I just assumed personally was to protect more residents by having a limited amount of people out the back where there's less premises. That was the idea behind that, anyway. Yeah. Okay, uh, and I know other premises have adopted a uh, a similar practice in the, in the area. Uh, when you say a limited number, do you have a number in mind of the number of people who go out at any one time? Not a specific one, but I'd imagine with such a large area, I'd say they could easily separate out between five to ten people. But I can negotiate on that with residents if they come to an agreement. OK, and would those people going out at that time be able to take the drinks? No, no. So there'll be a table before they exit the, the premises with door staff to keep an eye on the drinks. Obviously, there's a worry to people leaving drinks in certain positions without people watching them. Of course. So there'd be a door staff member there to see the staff, uh, smokers go out and look after the drinks. OK, um, and then in relation to the um, hours inside uh, that you've requested from the premise, they are um, I'm looking at your the previous license that lapsed. They are in line with what you've had previously. Yep. OK. Um, you're not looking at negotiating or reducing any of those. I was at this stage, no. We'd be happy to obviously discuss with after police representation and environmental health. That's good to hear. OK, um, what I'll do then, Chair, if I let um, the police and environmental health go on and perhaps come back later on. Yeah, that's no problem. If uh, the police could ask the questions. Yeah, nothing at this time, Chair. Thank you. Uh, environmental health. Uh, firstly, I feel for you with the situation you found yourself in, but I'm not quite sure how much that is going to play a part in the licensing decision, uh, unfortunately. Um, you've obviously invested a lot of money in this, in this premises. Um, I'm just wondering, could you tell the committee um, how much you've spent on uh, any acoustic improvements or any acoustic studies to, to actually come to being what, your, is, what your operation is, what the building's capable of containing for you to operate? Yeah, uh, being this is my first premises, this is something that I didn't really know an awful lot about, which is something that I didn't invest in. Uh, the particular style of wall that I've gone for, the, the timber frame style wall, is actually used as an acoustic product. Um, I don't know his capabilities, but if, if you were just to sort of find that sort of slat wall with the fabric behind, it does absorb noise, but to what level? I, I, I couldn't answer that question. Um, it is something that we would possibly invest in in the future, but with no money in the bank due to this problem, we can't invest in that right now. Um, we are aware there's certain parts of the premises that leaks more pollution than others, but with no financial backing right now, there's nothing I can do about it, apart from come to some agreement with noise and and sort of music and that sort of thing at this present time 
So I, I think from that, um, sounds like you're in agreement really that building may not be appropriate for the hours you're playing for. Um, I wouldn't necessarily agree. I suppose I can, from personally, then if I was to sort of measure and go out the front of the premises, which I do quite often, it's very difficult to hear any background music that I'm playing through the speakers that come through the ceiling. I think I didn't in, I didn't put those speakers into the premises, but by chance, I believe that is reducing the amount of noise that goes to the front. If you were to stand out there, the loudest noise you will hear is either the castle or the tyres and the cars driving past. You would find it very difficult to hear the noise coming through the windows with a background new music. Uh, you mentioned since you operated it under the licence you inherited then, it, you didn't cause any problems. I, weren't aware of any complaints, is that right? No, no, I, I was aware that there was a complaint. There was a complaint on Bank Holiday Sunday by somebody around five past ten in the evening that he could hear every word of every song being sung. Although his premises is, I would imagine, three to four hundred yards away from the premises. So I was kind of shocked that he would be the one or be that close to make that uh, representation to me over the phone. I went in and asked the singer to turn it down. I then rang said person back to ask if I reached a level that he was happy with. He disagreed, um, and then following that, then I had a, a complaint from pollution with no time date or any evidence of the complaint, just to say that you would give us the opportunity to rectify our complaints, but we haven't spoke to anybody about being able to do so or had anybody to come to us to explain what the problem was. So, I'm, well, I suppose you wouldn't have to agree with me really. So when you were operating under the license of similar that you're applying to, there was complaints. Then you've gone to a temporary event notices with reduced hours and we haven't received complaints. No, that's right. Um, but I was only trading for four weeks in the new industry. Um, it, it takes time to test things and to get things right. I don't feel that I was given the opportunity to do so. Uh, I, I get on with, with residents and people within Ponte Dewey and I have no harm or bother in, in, in reducing music to make people happy. Um, the, the, pre, the place itself is designed for people who, who want to enjoy themselves. They want to enjoy themselves without the music. But uh, as I said, I would only learn if I had more time, but I wasn't given any. And yeah, could, is there any chance you could give us a description of the business? Because I'm a bit confused really from the description, because on the face of it, on the old license, it was it came through committee and representation, representations were made on the understanding it was going to be a food place. And that's what it was. What I'm seeing with your premises is that you've got two elements almost. You've got yeah. the premises for food, which apparently I've heard from other people who've been there is it's top notch. And quite honestly, one of the comments I've heard is that they don't see why they need to go so late because the food is so good yeah. that they will travel it. So hands up to that side of things. And I'm just fearful really that potentially you're going to ruin a good thing with the food by pushing this music element in the night. In um, order to know the answer to that, you'd have to see the back end of the business and see what the, the biggest margins are. And those margins are small in regards to food. The very brand itself says Tex-Mex cocktails. It, it says itself on there. You're not going to have a cocktail at four o'clock in the afternoon. The very word, some word, the very word would show that it would be an evening product. Um, I designed the brand itself for them to go hand in hand. It, it wouldn't work without one or the other, which is why um, financially I've struggled by just supplying food. Um, and again, as I said, the loss itself speaks for itself, really. In, in the time that I'm open until, with what I've had to open until, there's not enough money there to run a, a profitable business. I, I think that's all the questions I've got, really. Um, it would probably be more of a statement. That's great, thank you. Um, uh, can I have Mrs. Roberts, please? Do you have any questions for oh, the applicant? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Susan Roberts and I live at number six, Geneva Terrace. Um, uh, my house now is directly opposite uh, Mr. Dyer's restaurant, opposite the um, end, what we call the end area. If I can just let them up there now. Anyway, um, uh, sorry, my, Mrs. Uh, Roberts, what it is, this is for you to ask a question to the applicants. Oh, to Mr. Dyer? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, hi there. Um, we've not met before. No, no right. Um, as I just said, uh, Mr. Dyer, uh, my house now, Middle Terrace, directly opposite the 
you were back in um, little garden thing there. Uh, now, when when this license was with the previous owner, Pasha, I think, um, the the license was given that it was a ten o'clock closure at the back. No pipe music, no alcohol. Um, those were the two important ones, and that by ten o'clock all covers would have been cleared. End of story. Lights out. End. Lovely. But I see now again, um, you want to extend that um, to another time. Um, spoke to Miss Walker now and 10 o'clock perhaps would suit you. It would definitely suit me, but not with having pipe music or any kind of music. Mm. Yeah, well, I, you know, I would go with that. I mean, willing to try something, but on the understanding that, you know, I've got to get my sleep. You know, I'm not your age. But having said that now, the last thing anybody here would want is to see you fail in your business. I mean, that goes without saying. Everybody wants to see a young person with a family get on. But that is uh, mine and neighbouring neighbours is, of course, you're right opposite my window. Yeah, that's fair yeah. OK, thank you. It's great, thank you. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to make uh, a, a statement later on anyway. Right, OK. Um, Mrs Bromfield. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Committee. Thank you for allowing us to um, join in this afternoon. I'd like to ask a question, Mr Dyer. I'm Joanne Bromfield. I too um, kind of uh, am the sole breadwinner for my children. Um, I too understand the fickle nature of business. Um, uh, but I have. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, Mr. Roberts, can you turn off your microphone, please? Sorry. Uh, no problem at all. Um, I don't have any. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hello. Right. I don't have any fancy titles or positions. I don't work for the councils, either Neath or Swansea. Um, I'm not a town councillor. I'm just a woman that works hard, just like you, like all everybody, I should say. I can't say single people out. And I try and provide for my children also. Um, the question I want to ask, I've got a couple of questions and I'll keep them very brief because I too would like um, an opportunity to put a statement. But the first question, are you new to Pontedowie at all? And how long have you lived in Pontedowie? Okay. Pollution and the taxi ranks, but whether it's my age or not, I lived where I lived and it was my the position I was in financially and I was stuck with it. Mm -hmm. um, but at no point would I ever go as far as to making a complaint regarding noise in the middle of a town centre. OK, so um, to follow on from that, so you have lived in Pontedowie pretty much by your admission um, most of your life or you've been party to um, in and out of Pontedowie from Rose. Um, are you at this point completely unaware or are you aware of the high level of antisocial behaviour in the village that has certainly been something of my experience of the last 18 years because I'm not from mm -hmm. Pontedawi. Um, I live there but I'm not from there. So um, are you aware of the high level of um, antisocial behaviour in the village full stop? Absolutely. Uh, I'm 34 years of age now and I've been drinking there when I was 18 um, and I've spent many a time in all the pubs in the area mm -hmm. and I've seen it myself. Right. So you are aware of the high level of antisocial behaviour and the impact that it does have on a small town? Not so much the impact, um, okay. but like any area or any village that has pubs or, or restaurants, it's going to have an element of antisocial behaviour. I suppose it's down to the business itself to, to keep that uh, to, to a well-managed level. Right, OK. So my last question is, as you are aware of the antisocial behaviour, and um, the fact that you're not aware of any impact. Um, 
I suppose I think what I'm asking really is, are you aware then that when you do close your doors, um, albeit at the moment um, it's on a restricted license, are you aware of the increased impact socially, antisocially um, on the bit, uh, on the area? Yeah. Is go to the local residents if you were to look at the pack that was there. Um, there's numerous residents that I went to to ask on my capabilities and how much noise pollution my premises itself mm -hmm. uh, added to the antisocial behaviour. Mm -hmm. And everybody has marked me out of nine out of ten, and they're on average between nine and ten. Mm -hmm. So the noise levels from my premises is an add-in to the general uh, antisocial behaviour, um, as pretty much all the residents close to me have agreed and signed. OK, so as a crow flies with regards to my proximity to yeah. your premises, um, unfortunately, I am far too close um, for yeah. my liking yeah. and that um, to be unaware of the antisocial behaviour that follows on from the most of the public houses. Mm -hmm. um, I think what concerns me is one of your Facebook posts some mm -hmm. months ago actually um, uses as almost like, um, in my opinion, um, a unique selling point of we're, we are the longest opening pub mm. in Pontadawi. And I wasn't aware that at the closure of Kitties, as uh, Ms. Walker has already mentioned, I didn't realise there was a vacancy mm. for another pub no. to extend um, its licensing hours to the early hours. Yeah. Is this a question or a statement? The question is, are you aware of it? Aware of? The fact that asking for a 230 license contributes to not just the antisocial behaviour, but the historic antisocial behaviour that has gone in Pontadawi for at least the 18 years that I've lived there. Are you aware that your business has the potential and has, unfortunately, whether you accept that or not, mm. in the last four weeks, mm. I've seen personally an increase yeah, in traffic, people yeah, um, moving from the pubs that close, um, say, at 11.30. So the, under the heading of you've lived here all your life, you're aware of the antisocial behaviour. Are you aware of the impact that uh, actually opening till 2.30 a.m.? Are you aware of the antisocial behaviour that can follow from that and the impact it has on all of us? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not answering yourself, no? OK, right. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just sorry. asking a question to Mr. Dye. Yeah, that's no, fine. I just wanted to um, just point out that obviously the Danny's license of 2.30 and this application is just following suit of what was previously on the license. It's not that he's choosing to, he's not choosing to add hours. This is what he had previously and the license that was transferred. And as Mr. Chappell um, explained earlier, it was... Um, Obviously, the the previous license holder. This is through no fault of of Mr. Dyer himself. It's not that he's choosing to be the latest venue, and there isn't a vacancy for the latest venue. Um, it it is just the fact that he's he's copied the license that was there to his new application. And I appreciate Ms. Walker ask, answering for Mr. Dyer, Mr. Dyer, just because the previous um, tenant, the previous license holder, had a two thirty doesn't necessarily mean you should. It's not about filling a void, as your Facebook post quite clearly said, we're the longest opening. From my perspective, from my personal um, situation, that is concerning. All right, so that's the question I asked you. Ms Walker has answered for you, but the question is, it doesn't mean you follow suit. Um, coincidentally, that we didn't open because Kitty it is closed. It was happening around the time that I'd already started the business plan. Um, you would say any business person would be happy when another premises so close closes where you can gain more business. Um, there is an element of profit behind having a later license, more custom over longer periods of time. Any business would understand that's a great thing. It always seems to be that Ponty has been tarnished by other, other businesses and other mm -hmm. landlords. And it's not given the opportunity for new ones to change things. I've changed the type of people that come into my place. I've changed the pricing. The people that do attend are dressed nice and are there who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. You'll never find people in kitties over the age of 35. 
So I do believe that all these comments you make are tarnishing me with the same name that other people have got without giving me an opportunity myself to do so. If, if in a year's time you feel that I haven't come to what you want me to do and there's more complaints and I'm back in the same position, then I have done something wrong. But at the moment, people just suspect that I'll become the next kittens without giving me an opportunity. And I appreciate there's evidence of one or two complaints within the short period of time. But I haven't physically seen the evidence. I've only had that there was a complaint. And that was down to music, which is easily changed. As far as fights and antisocial behaviour, I feel that my bouncers and myself are very, very good in dispersing people away from the premises. What that customer then does on their way home, unfortunately, whether it's four o'clock in the afternoon after a shed full or two o'clock in, in, in the morning, it's very difficult for me to control that. All I can do is control the area that I work within and hope that my patrons behave themselves as I did growing up in the area. Um, but remember the patrons that come to me are similar age to yourself. And, and Mrs. Jones said, sorry, you know, Mrs. Roberts, um, they're not people, um, well, they are younger people there, but uh, they, they're generally a different class of person. So appreciate that particular answer. However, um, Again, are you aware of the negative impact of the antisocial behaviour? I know you say you can't control your... Sorry, Mrs. Rompil, I think he's answered that already. Well, I hope, I don't feel he has. I'm asking, a, again, a question of, is he aware that he can... Uh, Mr. Dyer, you say you can't control your patrons. Can you be happy that I've answered the question? Yeah, um, he did answer, but it just seems you weren't happy with his answer. No, it's not that at all. I'm just asking quite simply about the negative impact. It doesn't affect Mr. Dyer when his patrons leave the premises. However, his patrons leaving his premises has a direct impact on the rest of us. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, right, we'll move on to um, uh, subcommittee. Do you have any questions, Councillor Patterson? Um, no. Uh, do you want to? Uh, well, I'm unaware of where it's situated in Pony. Well, I do on the main road, the main drag over the premises. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, legal services, do you have any questions? Thank you, Mr Chair, if I may, please. Um, good afternoon, Mr Dyer. Um, yes, um, sir, you submitted yesterday um, the documentation, in fact, which you have referred to uh, today from um, residents that you say are supportive of your application and indeed have rated you very highly. Can I check in respect to those, sir, the, all of those forms appear to be dated in April or May of this year. Would that be right? That's right. So because that was the latest time that we were open, um, and I did this pretty much learning that there might be an issue, I wanted to see if my closest residents had an issue, if anything, so I could then deal with it and talk to them. But I knew that at some point within the business, I'd have to come up with some plan that I can deal with the local residents individually. Um, so that would be for the month that we were open in April. It's dated in May because I'll be doing it periodically, monthly. Um, so every month I would go to. Again, this month hasn't been plain sailing to allow me the time to do it, mm. but it's something I would like to do once a month um, just to keep, make sure I'm still on track with, with pollution to the residents that matter. Okay, sir, thank you. In terms of the forms as well, how how are those forms completed? Did you go knocking doors and inviting yeah. people to make yeah, those I, representations? I, or I, I wrote it, it myself. I sat down and thought, what would I like to be asked if I was living in the area and what um, and maybe um, put it on a piece of paper for them to do when I would knock the doors and ask. There were people that weren't in. I think I might have missed Mrs. Roberts 
Um, I did try twice on that road, I believe you're kind of in the middle. I think I had four from that road that were happy. Uh, one is a solicitor's, the other one is an accountant. So I think the only premises sadly I did miss was yourself. So did never take, oh, that's right. Okay. Um, and right, is it, I can refer to it. Oh, yeah, I did, yes, hello. <laughs> Hiya. Um, so if I just find that one. Uh, right, so that's number. Let's have a look. Where's well, got? No, it is that one. I'm trying to think which, which I was just. Anyway, the, what, what I was saying was, um, I think it's your husband that answered, um, and he said there was no complaints so far, and if there were complaints, I would have known about it. Is that right? On what question? Yeah, I'm happy for you to answer. Mm. No, absolutely not. But but what's going on today and what will go forward would have would would create the same kind of noise as would have been before because. Uh, apart from the music then, uh, sorry, music, which we, as I say, we can come to an agreement on a noise level that you're all happy with. But even if we didn't agree with it uh, and we didn't have any noise at all, going forward, as far as the Never Terrace is concerned, there's going to be no change in in, in, in anything. Yeah, OK. Um, sorry to, to finish the question. Uh, yeah, so I knocked the doors. Uh, the, the flat's quite opposite. You know, you kind of have to put a code in. So one person answered and I kind of climbed the stairs and asked individuals. Um, and, and the ones who, will have, who answered were happy to sign it, just to say that, and I don't know any of them, and as I said, I don't know these, um, apart from living next door to them for the last two or three months. Okay, okay, so, thank you, sir. Um, in terms of the, in terms of the forms as well, mm. um, did you, is that the entirely representative picture, or do you, did you have any adverse forms coming back? Where uh, no, that that that's everything. Uh, the only ones you won't see are the people that didn't answer. So every single one that was answered or signed for is either in that pack, which is the one that would support the later license, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven residents. Um, the other ones didn't send them back, which I I suppose couldn't, didn't, wouldn't. I, I won't know the answer to that. OK, but there were some people who, for one reason or another, didn't. Yeah, complete. and, and you know, if I had more time, um, I could have possibly gone and knocked the door and found out more. I, I did. I did actually, I believe, not have one from yourself and I did come and knock the door to see why. But you you weren't there uh, just because we got on so well before uh, I was offered to sit in the sofa and we had a chat for half an hour. Um, I was just, I think if there was anybody I was hoping I would have had one from was this lady. OK, well, I, I can see where you're coming from. I can see why you would have gone through this uh, particular exercise. In relation to your premises, the uh, the forms that have been completed, where are they in proximity to you? What, the, the premises? Yeah, the, of, the, uh, of the various reviews that oh. you uh, undertook with uh, residents, how far? Oh, Location-wise? Yeah. Um, so anything that's labelled as an ever terrace is the same street as these two ladies, which is directly on the side of the drinking area, uh, so you'd be outside area. Um, the flats then are above me, directly to the right of me, who signed and said they were happy. And the other ones then, I'd say... 20 to 30 yards in front of me. Okay. And then to the right, there's no premises. And to the left, there's pubs and garages. So these are the ones that I feel that would struggle the most with any pollution. And they've all said they were happy with what I've done so far. Okay. Uh, please don't take this the wrong way because it's certainly not meant in yeah. any uh, in any critical way. Mm. Um, when you sat with the people, did you sit and say, right, we have to go through all these details? Uh, was there any pressure brought to bear uh, so this, on this particular letter that's a bit more lengthy um, was sent to the post and they were allowed to get back to me in their own time. So I didn't have to sit there and read it. They had their own leisure to do so. And if they sent it back, I hope they read it and they do appreciate what I'm doing. The other one is quite straightforward. I showed them the little statement at the, at the top that just reads that um, what the letter is about. It's just me checking on my ability to control noise and you are rating me between one and 10, 10 being the best and one being the worst. 
uh, my 10 year old daughter would understand that and they all agreed and gave me eight, nine to 10. Very well. OK, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr Chair. That's great, thank you. Um, Uh, we'll now have the authorities' submission statements. Uh, so, can we have uh, the police first, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I won't repeat the first bit, which I've already mentioned. Um, obviously, we're here today to deal with the application uh, for a new premises license under circumstances that were beyond Mr. Dyer's control. Uh, whilst I have a lot of sympathy for him, again, as I've mentioned in previous incidents or at hearings, have to look at this as a role of a responsibility, a responsible authority to is this premises suitable or what they requesting suitable for its location. Um, section 1.15 of the guidance recommends early contact between applicants and South Wales Police actively encourage early engagement. And this in this case was uh, resulted in a meeting with Mr Dyer and Mr Mohammed Pasha, who I believe owns the building on the 22nd of, April, uh, 22nd of April regarding the content of the application and how they plan to operate the premises. At this meeting, both explained that they intended to operate premises as a food led business, uh, providing quality dining experience, but they felt as the previous licensable hours stood, they, would, they were and had and would lose customers after they'd eaten to go to other venues to continue their evening's entertainment. As a result, they wanted to extend the licensable hours for the supply of alcohol and opening hours by two and a half hours every weekday to match the hours they already or the previous license had for Fridays and Saturdays. They've also applied to extend the reuse of the rear garden till midnight. However, uh, as we heard earlier, there is now a proposal for that to close at 10 o'clock, which I'm happy to accept and I believe removes a lot of the issues that could have been caused. I'm aware from a first hand account of a friend of mine who has attended the, the premises that the original plan of food led customers remaining on the premises until uh, it closes has not materialized in its fullest extent and that there is and appears to be a clear change of clientele between when the kitchens close and to the terminal hour that the previous license allows, uh, with it resulting in that the restaurant then becomes another vertical drinking establishment, albeit with high end drinks and higher end prices. My immediate concern about the terminal hour of the premises when operating as a late night drinking venue would be it would make this on every day of the week the final destination venue in the town. As has been alluded to, uh, a previous venue. Um, had a terminal hours of 4.30 that is now closed. There is a nightclub which hasn't opened for the past three years and I don't believe will reopen, which closes at four o'clock, both which no longer trading. And it means this would be the only premises if it had a terminal hour of 2.30 every day uh, that would be operating beyond 1.30 in the town and give revellers a choice of one if they wish to continue drinking after that time. Having recently had the final destination venue close, uh, the immediate concern is that this venue will provide a replacement. And albeit, I must admit, I think the pricing and type of drinks may restrict the clientele from the previous venue coming here. I believe the risk of such problems materialising must be considered. I request, therefore, to reduce the potential for crime and disorder with the potential of customers making their way from the seven other premises within the town or within walking distance and all within a terminal hour earlier than this 
that the terminal hour for this application be reduced to 1.30 a.m. to prevent a convergence of people trying to find somewhere to continue drinking. But if the committee are mindful to allow a terminal hour of 2.30, I would request the following condition be imposed to reduce the risk of potential disorder. And that is that there should be no entry or re-entry to the premises after 1 a.m. If, as I do, the committee feel the terminal hour of 1.30 is in line with other venues is more appropriate, I would request that, as would happen with any new application for vertical drinking with such a late terminal hour, that the use of door staff would be appropriate. I accept that this places a financial implication on the premises, which is why I would request the below conditions relating to the use of door staff, that every Friday and Saturday night and the Sunday preceding a bank holiday, and as per the previous license, Thursday night preceding Good Friday, Christmas Eve, Boxing Day, New Year's Eve, the door staff are employed and will be on duty from 10 o'clock until closing time. All other premises, the premises license holder will risk assess the need at all other times, my apologies. Premises license holder will risk assess the need for door supervisors and provide super supervision between such times and in such numbers as is required by the risk assessment. When used, the staff shall also display the SIA license and a reflective armband whilst on duty. And if and when door staff are used, a, reg, a daily register of security, security personnel being maintained. And the register show, shall show the name, address, license number of each door supervisor, dates and times they operate, and the register must be kept available for inspection by the police and authorised officers of the local authority. The days specified are the key dates that the applicant has identified, having requested extending hours for both live and recorded music in the seasonal variations in section E and F. I would request that prior to the grant of this, act, this license, should the application be successful, the following conditions proposed by the applicant be amended to read as outlined below or be added for the reasons given. Under the Prevention of Crime and Disorder, the operating schedule does refer to the provision of CCTV. So I would ask the following condition be added, that a staff member from the press premises who is conversant with the operation of the CCTV system shall be on the premises at all times when the premises is open to the public. This staff member shall be able to show and provide police or authorised officers recent data or footage with an absolute minimum of delay following a lawful request. Under the protection of harm, there is mention of a refusals book, but it only refers to refusals to persons under the age of 18. And I would ask that this be extended to read that a log should be kept detailing all refused sales of alcohol. The log shall be include the date and time of refused sale, the name and member of staff who refused the sale, and the log should be available for inspection of the premises by police or an authorised officer of the council at all times while the premises is open. My rationale for this, Chair, would be that this is a useful, if there is a refusals log as they suggested, it would be a useful addition for the management of the premises to be able to assess whether they are identifying any trends or worrying issues with the refusals so that they could then take action to address them. I would also ask that the following condition be added. Signage should be displayed in a prominent position within the premises informing of the Challenge 25 condition. There is a condition proposed relating to the seating area being used for smoking after midnight. Um, as I've already asked for this to be closed by 10, uh, I would ask for this condition to be removed. However, having heard the proposal suggested by the applicant earlier, uh, I would be amenable to a discussion, certainly with the applicant and environmental health about this area being used as a smoking area, providing agreement can be reached on numbers and how it's managed. The applicant also proposes that Mr Dyer becomes the DPS for the premises, but adds that he's awaiting his personal licence number. Do, have you received that yet? Uh, cool. I was going to say, should confirmation be received that he has been issued his personal licence, there will be no objections to him acting as DPS. I believe the above information is both appropriate is proportionate and in line with other venues of this type. And I would ask that the committee consider them should they, when they make a judgment on this application. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, if we can have the um, 
as a statement from environmental health, please. That's a big sigh from everyone. <laughs> no, I think this shouldn't take too long. Um, look, going over some of the things we went over earlier, it's all about risk assessing the premises. And you look at this premises, it's going into the sensitive hours of the night, two hours, two in the morning. It's a built up area. Yes, there's another license premise which has been identified, but I'd like to share with the committee that that is already being dealt with us. Uh, enforcement action has been taken against that premises. And it's slightly different in respect to this premise because it, when things are managed correctly there, the building is capable of containing the noise. So it's failure of management, not necessarily the, the structure that's fault. Um, I think the outside area, I think pretty much we're almost there. I think we'd be happy with it closing at 10 o'clock. We wouldn't want any music being piped out to the back. I know um, Mr. Dyer mentioned about uh, the calming from the ambience, but what like age has been touched upon quite a bit. What uh, what he may find relaxing may not be what the neighbours find relaxing, especially if we're going to go down the Ibiza the type of calming type of with the repetitive beat. So that's going to drive people nuts. So I think for, for the outside area, and I think the numbers should be limited to four people at one time because I think the volunteer and door staff on that back door. I think you know, when when door supervisor then, I think can capable of handling the behaviour of four people. I think once you go above four, I think it starts getting difficult uh, to manage those numbers. So those are the conditions that have been put forward, and I think we'd be in agreement with that. Um, look, it's a high risk premises. What's been applied for? The operating schedule does not match to the risk. Uh, you would have seen the operating schedule, you would have seen that it's not very detailed. It's very, very vague in, in points. Um, so really, again, doesn't make me feel comfortable uh, at all with those conditions because there's nothing to grip hold or to say. So I think it says when, if there is a time that the business is in the financial position to improve the blazing of the premises, double blazing may be considered. That highlights to me that really deep down, they know double blazing is needed if they want to go to two o'clock in the morning. Um, I think there's another reference that is going to be kept to the appropriate decibel level. Who set that decibel level? How is it going to be measured? Where from? All these questions are really, it's quite smoke and mirror, as I would say, with the noise management plan. It's nice as an attempt has been made, but I think if you sit down, you'll see for yourself that there's nothing there to hang your hat on. Um, so, so, in all fairness, I, I do sympathise with the position he's found himself in. And like I said, and I second what Nick said earlier, the people that we know have gone there, completely complimentary of the food, really high standard, would go back there again. However, actually, the end trade spoilt their experience. They came away from there, couldn't wait to get out of there because the clientele changed after the kitchen had stopped. So that may be something from a business model that they might want to consider. Um, outside the turn profit. So really speaking, we're, we're suggesting that entertainment can be done there under the Live Music Act up until 11 o'clock and the door should close at 12. Um, this is to say, because Mr. Dyer himself said he's learning the trade. We've got emails from him crying out for, for help. So if somebody so inexperienced, not knowing anything about the fabric of the building, surely shouldn't be held with a licence with such potential to have such impact. Um, and I take it on board that he hasn't had the opportunity perhaps to um, show himself, but we can't forget the fact that when he thought he was running that premises licence, we had complaints. We had an officer 40 metres away identifying heavy base coming away from the premises. So when that license that he's applying for now was in place, we were having complaints. We find out that premises license isn't the go and he's had to go to tens, which we've objected to. Complaints have stopped. So I think that says says a lot, to be honest though. And what I propose is that the license with the agreed conditions should close at 12, no regular entertainment after 11 o'clock. And the opportunity that he can have to demonstrate that he's learning how to run it properly and to test the premises would be through means of tens. And I know we've objected to tens up until now, but we would not object to future tens coming in to give him an opportunity to demonstrate for the licensing committee members that it can be operated. And I think quite honestly, that's the most reasonable way to go forward with this, because I think it's a big, big risk allowing a two o'clock license for the premises. They don't know what, what this capability of containing is. And quite and quite honestly, in experience as well, like Mr. Dyer, in all fairness, to him, has been quite open and honest about. Um, so I think really that's it from us. I think that sets out where we're at and our reasoning. 
Um, and if you've got any questions, maybe it'd be a bit easier to do that way. That's great, thank you. Uh, we'll now on move on to uh, questions to the authorities. Uh, Neil, do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah. Can I just go and try and clarify a few things and see where we are with the with the applicant yeah. on, on what's just been said? So, um, opening hours to begin with. Um, we're looking at the weekend hours um, here, aren't we? Um, the police have come one thirty a.m. Mm -hmm. Environmental health twelve, um, but with the the offer of that um, the future. 10s not being objected to. I don't have any 10s left because I've had to use them. Oh, yeah, I was going to clarify that point. It was with um, light pollution, but obviously YCP closed. The only trade he's had is yeah. via temporary vent notices, which now means as a premises, he has no temporary vent notices left to you. So as much as we appreciate your, your suggestion from a business model, that, that can't work because he has no, no temporary vents left. OK. Um, in relation to the, let's start with the, the, the lower offer of environmental health with a midnight clause, would you be amenable to that? No, have us one. Terminal, so out, close doors. Nick, when you said uh, terminal, I was half us one was closed doors. Yeah, um, drink until one. Yeah. Okay. I I'm just trying to get a picture of where we're at, where you're willing to come to, where environmental health are at, and where the police are at. Sorry, so, can we also give consideration to obviously the neighbouring premises that closes at the same time across the road? Um, and from a dispersal point of view, um, obviously, if we all kick out from two licensed premises at the same time, then all your customers are then in one area, um, which will will create uh, more noise than obviously at different times. So I agree with um, Danny not agreeing to the same time as the premises across the road. OK. I think with in relation to convergence, I think from a police resourcing perspective, a crime disorder, if you know two or three premises are closing at the same time, you can re you should be able to resource it accordingly. If you have premises, a number of premises closing at different times, you extend that uh, window an opportunity for any disorder. So I would stick to the 130. So there isn't an agreement um, on that. Um, environmental health with the, the 12 o'clock, no, now knowing that the temporary vet notice um, isn't an option, is there anything else you can consider uh, as a trial purpose before extending there? I, I think terms? that's the difficulty, isn't it? We're looking for something for a trial, but on something that's quite permanent to the premises license. Exactly. So when do the tens actually re re come back into it? Because it's every 12 months. The 1st of December. So Start again. May, maybe this is the opportunity to have a few months of concentrating on the food and learning the business and get these things in place. You know, acoustic reports, acoustic things, you know, because obviously that's one of the sticking points here is that they don't know the, the quality of the sound. OK, attenuation in the building. That's fine. So can I just come on to the external area then? So 10 o'clock um, and there was four people at any one time after 10. Is that something you're agreeable yes, to? I, I, I can that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going on what was uh, suggested by environmental health. They suggested four people in the beer garden. Is that just the smoking after? Yeah, because af after 10 o'clock, your beer garden's closed. So it's only for smoking yeah, anyway. To be honest, the hours smoking, but the yeah. Okay. So there's no issues with that. So it's, it's, it's the hours for entertainment inside and the terminal hours for the premises that that's still yeah um, can i just clarify it. sorry when um mr Lyley was talking about the smokers i don't know if it was suggested by the client by the applicant that there would be door staff controlling the door and who went in and out surely that would mean there would be door staff every day because that was because that certainly wasn't what i was asking for. They were just as upset what happened to me as, as I was. So Sarah said, just go for the best possible case you can go for. I just go for the best times. There's no way that I'd be open until two o'clock on a weekday. However, if there's a 60th birthday party, 
that I book in on a Tuesday, I would like to have the ability to have a later license for the unusual event. My takeaway stops at half past eight and my food stops a quarter to nine. There's nobody left on a weekday after half past ten ever. Um, it was just when I came in, I sat with Sarah. She said, just take the best possible hours you can and, and hope for the best, which I did. So it's only Friday and Saturday, even Friday, if I'm honest. We've never really been open later than 12. It's just the Saturday that it goes on a little bit longer out of the whole week. Yeah, so because what I just wanted to clarify was what was suggested with doorstop mentioned it would put an imposition that certainly I wasn't suggested, which is doorstop every day, which I don't think we're looking to do. No, I just no. and the the issue I would say with with the terminal hour goes back to something I've said previously, which is um, you running it very responsibly and not using those of hours available to you does not prevent anybody who follows after you opening it. 2.30 or opening until those terminal hours permit them. So it's whether it's an appropriate place and use of the premises. Yeah, I, I could see that, but obviously there is the potential for a review if um, a previous occupier came in and caused a nuisance, then then you'd be able to deal with that, uh, those, those issues that arose then. Most certainly, yes. Okay. Um, okay, Chair, um, move on to other uh, questions. Yeah. Thank you. Right, now we're on the questions for responsible authorities. Neil, do you have any questions for... I just don't mind. Do you yeah. want to move on to the... Yeah, uh, applicants, if you have questions for the police or environmental health. Um, yeah, can I just ask a quick question of um, Mr Bailey of South East Police. Uh, you refer to your, um, in your representation as a meeting to discuss the application, submit this that we're hearing today. Um, and you had that meeting with Mr Daya and Mohammed Pasha at the premises to discuss this application. Can you confirm that that, applica that meeting was for this application or was that meeting before Mr Daya opened the doors of his business um, with the previous licence? I can't confirm. I'm not sure, to be honest. It could, be, yeah, could well have been prior to us. Yeah. It could very well have been. Um, and then, um, obviously, in your in your representation, uh, you may comment of a friend of yours have attended the premises. Um, obviously, the, there's no evidence with that. That's hearsay. Um, that could have been any circumstance that could have, have made the kitchen close early, et cetera. So just in relation to that, I don't, I don't feel like much weight can be given behind some hearsay. Um, in relation to, obviously, um, your concerns over the policing of um, numerous licensed premises closing at the same time, um, in my submission, I was just referring to, obviously, having a slight differentiation in closing times to allow customers to disperse from the area more than the individual premises. So not, obviously, putting a, an increase on, on policing, um, but, you know, so that unfortunately so the queue when the late night refreshment house can go down um it is something that we have discussed previously whether or not if if mr dyer was granted a later license than than at the licensed premises in the area that he would offer a late night refreshment um small food menu so that it wasn't actually sending people up the road that they could get their food and leave and he could then obviously encourage those customers to leave the area um in 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 an orderly format if if that's possible in licensed premises so i don't know what was the question um it's not so much a, a question but i'm a bit slightly offended by the fact that one would assume that we would have ibiza music outside when the current music we have is jazz music um, or anything of that. Uh, you know, that these these things can be discussed uh, and what type of music. I'm happy to come to an arrangement, but it's certainly not uh, fair to assume that I'm going to have Ibiza music. I'm, I'm presuming based on my age or, or anything of the sort. And that was directed to you. That was against uh, environmental health. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, You're welcome. Now, my the steer in terms of terminal hour and the police thing, which um, Miss Walker has referred to, the steer I've had from the operational commander of that area is that, to use his phrase, we're not dealing with Wine Street where we have 100 premises kicking out 8,000 people. Uh, Pontadawi, 
his words, we should be able to police and resource seven pubs in that area if they're all kicking out, because I know when they all close. Now, unfortunately, if we start debating whether they do actually police it, then we will go on for hours. So I'd, I'd really rather not get into that here. Uh, but that was the mindset of the operational chief inspector for Pontadawi. Do you have any more questions? No. Uh, do the interested parties have any questions? Yeah, Mr. Roberts. It's for the police or environmental health. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, do members of the subcommittee have any questions? No, I think we've been quite more. Yep. Uh, legal services? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we move on to um, submissions by from the interested persons to the subcommittee. So uh, would you like to go first, Mr. Roberts? Uh, Mr Chairman, um, what's been discussed now, um, you know, about the the back entrance, the beer garden then to the premises, um, you know, I, I'm personally quite happy with that. Um, coming out to smoke, of course, uh, well, I wish they didn't have to, but if they're going to have a doorman, I'm a non-smoker, so I don't know how long people and how many cigarettes you smoke at a time. But I hope this isn't now going to turn into something. They'll go out there now and maybe, if even with the doorman there, that they will maybe take alcohol out there to drink, you know, sneak a couple of something out with them. But, um, you know, it's all about keeping after 10 o'clock that that is quiet. So, you know... I'm not the only resident. There's Mrs. Young up there. You know, we are in close, close to the beer garden. So that is the main concern I had, and it seems to be quite resolved. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, Mrs. Bromfield. Hi there. Um, so how it impacts me and my family, um, I'm not here to speak for the other residents. I'm, I believe they've put their thoughts and feelings towards that. Um, so for me personally, I've lived in Pontchartrain for 18 years and I have witnessed personally the pubs having later and later and later licenses. And over that 18 years, I've filled in forms. I've attended various meetings. I've complained endlessly. We've been threatened. I've been personally threatened. I've had abusive letters to my workplace. I've had um, confirmation that uh, some publicans have rung the council. I'm referred to that FNB up the road. And for 18 years, I've tolerated that. I've tolerated these people back and forth to my workplace. It's really unpleasant. Mm. Um, late license, in my opinion, across the board are very problematic. We don't have in Potadau the infrastructure to deal with antisocial behaviour. Um, there isn't enough support and we don't have the policing available. The local uh, station is mainly manned by PCSOs and they're gone by 10pm in the evening. The number of phone calls that I have made personally, the uh, officers have, have been justifiably tied up in Neath and it has taken quite a long time to come to Pontedawi. We listen to people screaming, fighting. I have video evidence, which I wish you really could look at because you'd be appalled, absolutely appalled. We've had bouncers follow one particular lad. Um, he is known now as Tonner Gate, screaming at 3.15 in the morning, inciting everybody to come and fight him, including the bouncers that followed him from the past establishment that's now closed. The history that um, I have over the 18 years doesn't give me the confidence to believe that anything will change going forward because the nature of the drinkers in Pontadawi hasn't changed. 
Um, they come up from Herbert Street, from Bar 98, from the other place, from the rugby club. But they come up to Herbert Street and they convene at the, the next place that's open for the longest. We have speeding going through the village, car drivers that think it's something like Brands Hatch. Um, we have cars, taxis, honking horns. And to no, no finer point on it, it is demoralising. It is soul destroying. It is something where when my children were young, they would refuse to sleep in their bedrooms because they were so frightened because of the screaming and the fighting. And I urge you to look at the videos that I have supplied because they will shame every single person in this room. We've tolerated that for 18 years. And like I said, if I could move, I really would. My personal circumstance is not too different from Mr. Dyer's. Uh, 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 at a moment where I financially cannot, but I would like to because I don't want to live in Pontedawi anymore. Um, the impact on my family, like I said, my daughter is 13. The impact on her and my now my son has been, to not put a finer point on it, absolutely awful. We live essentially in what it could be a beautiful place. It is awful. Every weekend, I, I literally want to shut every door, every window and just go away because it's so awful. And from that point of view, I'm not tarring Mr. Dyer with any brush. I really am not. I really, really hope and wish for you to have success. But as one negative comment, uh, actually it wasn't one, it was over 90. Somebody on Anastair Road had the audacity to complain. 90 comments. Uh, Mr. Dyer, I believe you also commented about the, how environmental we're making your life hell. Well, I tell you what's hell. What he what is hell is being woken up at three o'clock in the morning with people screaming, fighting, trying to kill each other, cars going through the village. That's hell. That is absolutely hell. I don't live in a nice place. I live in a beautiful house. I, I've worked hard really worked hard to create something from nothing. And trust me, I know what nothing is. I really know what nothing is. And so to find potentially that a license application for seven days a week, irrespective of whether you will use them or not, will have a direct impact on my sanity, on my children's lives and down children's sanity, to be able to not go out and sit out outside because the music, not necessarily always from yours, yeah, from as a global problem but it starts with one pub having extended hours and it started with when the nit pub we've all named it started at one o'clock then two o'clock then three o'clock then four o'clock the impact on me personally has been catastrophic the impact on my family has been catastrophic and what concerns me is that if the committee so chose to revisit um what i would like to consider now is past which is pubs that have extraordinary um, hours in a town, um, is I'm going to be right back to 18 years ago and it's going to start all over again. And I urge you, I urge you to look at the videos. I really do. They, you, if you want to talk about age, they're your age and a little bit younger and not much older. And it is nauseating, absolutely nauseating. So under that premise where... One of the, the comments was, uh, well, you shouldn't have bought a house near a pub then. Then what do I suggest is that when anybody is considering business and a business plan, maybe if you want to have a business with longer working hours and look towards the areas that can actually tolerate that, Neath and Swansea. Sorry, can I just say that it, it wasn't myself that said regarding have a house somewhere else. I mean, no, 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 I'm just, just I, the you did comment food. about environmental health making your life hell. I'm going on for the we, fact that. Uh, thank you for, like, we've got your point now. Um, yeah, yeah, but like I said, Neath and Swansea and, have the infrastructure yeah. to deal with licensing hours that go beyond the norm, and the norm should be 11 till 11.30. Thank you. Thank you. And you'll have a moment, you'll be able to uh, ask question anyway now. Um, so we'll now move on to questions to the interested persons. Uh, Neil, do you have any? Uh, j just a couple. Uh, Mrs. Bromfield, you spoke Sorry. you spoke quite um, um, widely there about issues that you've experienced over the years in in Ponte de Rey. So you're very passionate about that. Um, have you made any specific complaints in relation 
to the premises that we're considering here today, Rum and Co. I've no, the the discussion I have had with environmental health is that um, what I have noticed since the closing of um, uh, kitties, um, we had some respite. And with the advent of Mr. Dyer's premises opening, we started to notice more and more people um, gathering in the cross after the pubs were closing. Dai, who wanted to throw himself off the bridge because he was upset over something. Um, some other chap throwing up in the um, little alcove of um, the cross. And again, more traffic. It is most noticeable. And yes, I have raised those issues with environmental health, with PCSOs, pretty much with any client that I've spoken to that's in law enforcement, I've shown them the videos. Pretty much anyone who's anyone knows the issues. I've contacted Jeremy Miles's office, Heath Davis, um, uh, Jill Lord, uh, Steve Todd, all of these are town councillors who are fully aware of the impact issues. Yeah, OK, just to confirm that you've you've made a formal complaint about Rum and Co to environmental health. I have raised issues. concerns about the increase in antisocial behaviour okay. since Rum and Co has open, reopened. Generally, antisocial behaviour within the town and around the premises, or, or specifically with the premises in relation to noise nuisance and so people, you, you mentioned people screaming oh, they, yeah. um, and, you know, the person who was um, trying to commit suicide and, and things. Time. But, you know, are, are they connected uh, are you aware that these are connected to? No, I can't possibly system. say no, that I've gone right. down to the cross, yeah. much as I wanted to, do, you know, do that today. But apart from going down to the cross right. and following them to and from, don't get me wrong, I have been very tempted to do the most bizarre things because it gets it gets to you, it really does. So with regards to following where the noise comes from, so I can't say hand on heart that the. Um, the clientele has exactly come. I haven't witnessed them coming out of the door of Rum and Co. And I haven't witnessed them going back in. I can only tell you that since the temporary licenses have been in place, I have most definitely in, in seen an increased traffic. OK, thank um, you. And ju just fine to, to you both. Um, what would be the decision that you would like the committee to make today in relation to this premise? So what would you like to see as the the, the optimal outcome of today? I think personally, I don't know about Susan, but I think personally, I think what I'd like to see as globally around the town is a closing. Okay, can, we, can we keep it to just this? Sure, sure, sure. But it it yeah. connects with the other pubs. There are other pubs. Yeah, I'd like them all in line with each other mm. so that we have when it is kicking out time, irrespective of whether they go down to Pontestory Taxis or A&M, I think that after one o'clock, enough already. Seriously, enough. One o'clock. I wouldn't be happy with it. I want 11, but I'm willing to concede that, unfortunately, there are other premises in the village that have one o'clock in the morning licences. And until we address all of them, mm -hmm. I would like, personally, I'd like to see them all brought to 11, but specifically with Rum & Co, in line with every other pub, please. Um, same question, Mrs Robert. Um, yes, I'd agree with uh, Joanne. Um, I think 12.30 is a tidy time for yeah. closing, um, but it's not suitable for Mr Dyer for reasons uh, I, I don't really know. Um, it's not suitable for us either. Well, as, as you residents. know, of okay. course, I'm a different uh, age group, Mr um, Chuck, so, well, I am. I mean, you know, they're younger, and as I say, nobody wants this young man to fail, oh. you know. But... Um, I'm going to say 12.30, but, it, you know, okay. I'll go with everybody else as long as there's nobody out the back. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Roberts. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chapter. Thank you. Uh, to the applicants and representatives, have any questions? Miss Walker, um, 
No, what I'm giving you is an appraisal of my personal experience of having lived in an area that has historic late licenses and absolutely not. I would have had a different conversation that would have involved uh, law enforcement if Mr. Dyer had um, approached me personally. I don't particularly understand the relevance of the question, but there you go. That's fine. It's fine. No, I have. I can. I can confirm that I haven't actually gone out of my bed uh, after one o'clock in the morning uh, to change clothes, to walk down to the village, to follow people around, and determine. Oh, you came from there. You came from there. You came from there. All I can, can confirm, one hundred percent, is that since Mr. Dye has been opening on a temporary license, there has been an increase of traffic, and that's what. Um, that's what I said. Um, anywhere between midnight and one o'clock and one thirty. No, it's just my personal opinion of my experience of living on the cross. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, did the police and environmental health have any questions? Nothing from the police chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, where are we now? Do the subcommittee have any questions? No. No. Thank you. No. Legal. Uh, no, sir. Thank you. Uh, we'll um, we'll go to closing statements now, then, please. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh, please, if you can give your closing statement. Thank you, Chair. Um, South Wales Police do not wish to penalise or hinder local businesses and local entrepreneurs. What we are mindful of is that any license that is approved and issued is a lifetime license. We have to look beyond individuals, take those out and see whether a premises, if it is to be licensed, is in appropriate position, its possible impact and or possible or probable impact on its neighbours and its environment. I believe as outlined in my representations. Some of the concerns have already been met by the applicant and that the conditions I've asked for that haven't already been met by the applicant are proportionate and are appropriate for this premises. Thank you, Chair. Uh, environmental health. Nothing much to add to what was said earlier. I just want to put weight behind to go until two in the morning. Very sensitive I was. And to be allowed to do that, you need to understand how good your, your premises are containing, especially the music, because you know, ultimately that's what's going to cause widespread disturbance from, from our perspective of things. And I think um, as Mr. Dyer, he's new to the game. He said himself he's inexperienced. You know, he needs time to bed in, and I don't think up until two o'clock in the morning is the time to be bedding in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bromfield? No, I think um, I've said <laughs> So I shan't bore you by repeating myself, as is my one. So the dislike. No problem. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Roberts. Uh, now the applicants.
Is that it now? No. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Uh, we'll now um, retire for deliberations now. Sorry, can I come in? Sorry, Chair. Can we just go on to item six before we go into deliberation? Is that okay? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, gender item six urgent items. I have no urgent items. So now we will retire for deliberations. Um, Mr Chair, perhaps before the subcommittee do retire, um, I think this is going to take, you've heard two lengthy applications today. Um, this is going to take a, a, a while to um, review the, the evidence and the factors which have been placed before.